on digital transformation in the food and beverage industry. And to present on this subject, I don't have one expert, but three experts from the industry who would be talking on this particular subject. So let me introduce all the three speakers in the order of the sequence. Mr. Rajiv Tyagi, Director, Olitech. Mr. Shailendra Khanna, Domain Expert, FNB from Olitech. And Mr. Philip Dugan, Senior Solutions Consultant, AppStream, collaboration with Olitech. Gentlemen, welcome to the India Food Safety Summit 2021. Rajiv, Shailendra and Philip, a warm welcome to all three of you. I'm sure with three experts on this particular subject, it's going to be a cracking of a session. And to top it up, we have 2,200 plus live attendees as well. So I'm expecting a lot of fireworks in this session. And I'm sure that you're going to have a lot of uh, questions from the audience as well. So all the best, gentlemen. Looking forward to a fantastic thank session. Well, th thank you very much. Um, let's quickly uh, kick it off um, in that case. So I will share my screen here now. And let me know when you can see it. So you can see my screen here, okay, I hope. And I'll kick this off. The dairy industry faces unique challenges from fluctuating prices to accurately calculating costs to complex production processes that require accountability and transparency at every level. Aptian can help you address these challenges with a purpose-built ERP solution that provides the specific functionality you need to ensure consistency in your products, reduce costs, and make intelligent business decisions on operational and strategic levels. Aptian Food and Beverage ERP that includes allergen management, quality control, traceability, nutritional facts, ingredients declarations, and more. Perfect. Thank you, Philip. And thank you, Soumya, for a wonderful introduction. A very good afternoon to all. Uh, thank you so much for investing your time with us this afternoon. My name is Shalinder. I am a domain expert for food and beverage at Olitech. I've worked in the f &B industry for the past 16 years with an experience ranging from hotels, cloud kitchens to food and beverage manufacturing. Being part of the industry today, I'm really excited to get some insights on how technology can make an end to end difference to a food business with all its complexities, food safety and quality standards with the help of a food and beverage specific ERP solution. So broadly, our goal today is whatever your domain in, the, in this industry, uh, that you will come away with something, a new idea, a new perspective, a new strategy towards your business, which can help you improve all facets. So I'll kick off the conversation by asking questions that draw some high level insights and trends we would be thinking about to enhance our food businesses. So let's get started with the discussion. Uh, I, I'll start with Mr. Rajiv. Uh, Mr. Rajiv, the first question that I actually have is I would really like to ask is when there are so many multiple ERP solutions available <laughs> market then what is the real differentiator in an erp specifically built for food and beverage thanks Alain. and i'd like to provide you that answer i know you come from the industry do you think food and beverage is a simple industry absolutely not it has tremendous complexities so this is an industry which has a lot of complexity and all the generic ERPs which are available, and they are all world-class ERPs, but they are broad-based, generic functionalities. They'll cover the purchase to pay cycle, order to cash, manufacturing. But let's, they are not tailored for the complexities of the food and beverage. Let me take an example. Let's talk of food safety. You require stringent quality checks, inspections, traceability, you have to have the shelf life management, packaging, labeling, recalls management. Now, all this is very, very specific to FNB industry. And if you are working on a generic ERP, customers have to do a lot of customization. And customizations never end. So, Aptin ERP for food and beverage 
is specially designed on top of Microsoft standard ERP, which is Business Central. And it has all the nuances, all the functionalities which are specifically required for the food and beverage industry. Hence, you know, you don't need customization. It is kind of ready to use. So you gain a lot of time to market. And that is what the advantage of having this specific ERP is. It is really interesting that you talk about food safety because uh, for any food manufacturing, that is really, really important. And my second question is in relation to the food safety perspective. We now see sensors are getting embedded in machines for, you know, needed automations. What role does uh, a food and beverage specific ERP play in this area, uh, which could actually cover all these intricacies uh, of food manufacturing, labeling, packaging, pH levels, etc. So, Shalin, can you hear me, right? Yes, we can. Okay. Somehow my camera was misbehaving. So, this is a very important question. You know, today, all the machines, equipment, there is a lot of internet of things available, IoT, and a lot of data will get generated. But where will you consume this data? You know, this has to be put to use. And I feel it is the ERP where this data will get consumed because my demand planning, production planning, batch management, all that is going to happen in the ERP. So my quality records also need to be brought in into the ERP. I may manually input them, or it can be integrated with the, you know, all these lab equipments so that it can be directly ingested into the ERP. But for my batch yields, my costing, ERP is going to be the integrated system for the upstream and downstream functions. So I think the two will play jointly. It was not that, you know, one thing can work in isolation. And I suggest, Philip, we can actually give the glimpse of what I'm talking in the solution as well. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. So um, let me open up and give you a quick um, a view of that. So can you see my my the our shop floor app here on my screen now we can okay okay so ju just like you said there Ajeev, you know all the data is going to be inputted from different areas different apps <clears throat> and what we've done is we've allowed to pull that back into the erp by use of easy apps that speak and integrate with the erp so here I'm looking at now, what we have is our production app. And here it's a shop floor control app, nice and easy to use. And if I'm trying to go through and start going processing my jobs on the shop floor, if I try to start it up, it tells me there's a quality check triggered directly from it. I can go into my quality check app directly from my shop floor app and now in the quality check app, I can start entering some data as required. Here, I can enter things like, uh, first of all, I can see where this came from. It was triggered from a production order. I can go in and start recording my temperature. I can look and see what's my expected temperature here and what's my target results. I can do things like take pictures and add that those photographs, which are shared, saved in SharePoint automatically. So nice, easy to use interface to carry out and record my quality checks. What's next is that data then, once it's passed or failed, if I go back into my ERP, within the ERP then, on my order within the ERP, that data that I completed in my quality check app is saved and pushed back into the ERP. So then you're getting a full traceability and auditability of the quality checks you do. And that allows you to make sure you're um, meeting the requirements set out by the, for instance, the FSSAI, your the Food Safety and Standards Authority of India. They set out that you need to record this information and we've got it digitally saved in the EOP. Finally, within it also, we've added um, dashboards that sit on your browser within it with it within the system and you can go and view and look and say okay how are my quality checks being completed what amount of them are failing where are they passing 
what's my trend like over a given time so really giving you insightful data to your your quality checks and how they are going Perfect. so yeah the, the the last thing i would mention is our quality checks can be triggered from the erp on the inbound so when you receive things in packaging checks in production when you're doing pre-production checks maybe periodic checks every minute and then finally when you're shipping out to the customer things like vehicle checks packaging che checks are we meeting the customer requirements perfect thank you philip for those insights actually for further clarity i actually had a follow-up question to the food quality aspects what happens in case of a non-conformance as record keeping is you know is different and uh, intuitive course correction is important in that kind of scenario so what role does an erp play over there yeah great question great question and you know what i would say first of all non-conformance is a, like issue register and that's you've got your quality checks that are trying to make sure you have no issues but if you do have an issue how do you record them and make sure that you're tracking them too well firstly the ERP, because you're on Microsoft, it's connected with Outlook. And that means if you get an email with there's an issue, you can directly see what customer this came from because the email is registered in the ERP as well. And from here, you can start going in, take a look at which customer this is, you know, what kind of sales orders have gone out recently. And not only that, but you can go and actually- Philip, we are not able to see your screen. Okay, okay. Um, let me try to share it again. So just bear with me now. C can you see it? Yes, now we can. Okay, okay. So here we're looking at Outlook. And from here, because this is connected, I can go and start recording my issue automatically from Outlook. So I can go in and select and say, okay, here is a clearly an issue with the product. Maybe it's a product quality issue. And I can record that. I can define and say, is there something wrong with the structure? What was the packaging? And the nice part of this is as I'm filling this out, because we're in the Microsoft ecosystem, I can then push uh, tasks into Microsoft Teams directly. So here now we've created a channel in Microsoft Teams where you can start attaching different documents for this issue, where you can start uh, carrying out tasks and assigning them to other people in your organization and track them in Microsoft Teams. We've also provided a dashboard. So when you've got all your, 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 your issues, you can do a look at a high level report and say, okay, what are my, my, my quality checks or my, sorry, my, my issues by month? Is it packaging issues? Is it um, ripeness, mold? Is it because of warehouse? And also what's the total value of these issues? So then when you get this data, you can go and use the quality checks to make sure to reduce these issues here based on this data. Mm -hmm. Amazing, Philip, that was really, really interesting. I actually have another question to Mr. Rajiv. Now that we have a good idea that an ERP not only can automate processes, but also help in tracking food safety and quality. My question to you, Mr. Rajiv is, what is it i mean what is it in it for the management how can this benefit the key decision makers uh in the enterprise as it is crucial to have high level insights to all aspects of the business right so you see there is a lot of data that get generated through the erp through the devices and for decision making what is very important is that is the data and the latest information available to us or not? How quickly can we slice and dice the data? Can we do what if analysis? Because decision making is actually all situation based. So if my distribution cost is increasing and there is a pressure on the margin, I need to see all the correlated factors as well. right? And it is not that I can just rely on my historical sales report. So that is why in today's world, when we are saying the business analytics, so in our case, business analytics has been embedded in the ERP. And to top it all, we have built hundreds of KPIs, 
which are very relevant for the food and beverage industry and i think this is one of the biggest differentiator because if you start if i go to the customers and they tell their kpis and developing all those reports it can take a huge time now here we have a lot of dashboards already prepared pre configured ready to use for different department heads and stakeholders again i'll say philip let's walk the talk why don't we again give a glimpse absolutely absolutely rajiv so i showed you one or two dashboards we had there around the quality check and the non conformance a little bit but now for all the finance people what i'd like to show is a a nice dashboard we have here <clears throat> excuse me for our um, finance point of view okay and because you've got all your data in the eop i can then do some nice reports like we're looking at here here we're seeing our net margin and the broken down into costs and your gross margin okay i can come in here and on my costs i can see the different elements that make up that cost transport costs cooling costs and um, handling costs and i can see the different values directly from my gl in my erp i can break it down and see my gross margin the same way now that's pretty cool but what i can do even further is i want to simulate what will a different different cost or if i change my cost in the future how will that affect my bottom line and we can do this simulation here by coming in here and saying okay i've got a net margin here i want to go through and say let's simulate changing some of my costs here i want to get my net margin to get a bit better on that margin everyone's more everyone wants more profit so if i reduce my cooling costs by five or six percent okay how will that impact my net margin and here i can just drag it here along and that will go and simulate tell me i've got two percent better costs which increases my net margin by 31 percent so here we're looking at your data and allowing you to simulate and quickly make better decisions forecasting in the future so that's at, our, at that's at the senior management level and at the fine for the finance team that's one dashboard another one that i like here is for the warehouse team okay this is typically our customers they're using this this report they have it up on a big dashboard in the warehouse and what this shows is a heat map where the darker pink here um, and uh, locations or bins they're bins that are picked more frequently whereas the lighter pink they're bins that are picked less frequently down here in the bottom the black box here that's the doors of the warehouse. Now, just with a quick look at this, you can see this dark pink one here is being picked frequently, but it's quite far away from the main door. So the staff who are using the pallet trucks, they can look up and say, if we move the product that's stored here and change it with one of the light pink ones over here closer to the door, that's going to save us time, it's going to make our jobs easier, and it's going to save the company money in the end of the day. And they can make those changes themselves without the senior management having to prompt them to do it because they're looking at the data is as a dashboard and that's a really good um use of the uh, some of the dashboards we're finding our customers are using perfect philip the simulation really seems to be interesting for evaluating you know different uh, scenarios within within an enterprise moving back to rajiv sir i have i have another question and in fact uh, it is pretty similar to a question we have from the audience as well. So, uh, you know, how, I mean, who is this ERP for? Uh, is it for a small enterprise? Is it for a startup? Is it for a large scale enterprise? Uh, and what, and how cost and time productive are these uh, solutions? So Shalyan, today I think going digital is not an option. It's a necessity and it is not linked to the size. Every organization, big or small, has to go digital. Now, as I said, a world has also changed. Previously, when we were doing on-premise implementations, ERP used to cost a lot. But today, it is all cloud-based, where it is available on a SaaS model. 
you pay per user per month and somebody can even start with one user or can scale up to as many users as needed depending upon the size and complexity of the organization another thing that you'll see is that this software has been used our solution has been used both by traders as well as manufacturers whether they are dealing in the fresh short shelf life long shelf life there are enough references all across and you know we have thousands of references globally what we also try to bring is the global best practices which are ready to use and hence even the small companies they can start and they can scale you know as they grow with the software so the software will definitely help them to do that so i think it is you know for big and small all the organizations and what i'll also suggest to all the participants you know will we offer an assessment service if anybody is interested will like will be more than happy to do an assessment of your readiness to do the digital transformation will be happy to lay down a road map for you if there are specific case studies that you want if you want to see any more detailed demo for a particular area or a function and we also have an idc report on the current technology trends relevant for food and beverage industry so we are here to you know talk to the customers we are we are hungry to learn from existing customers in india and bring the best practices which are there from the other countries so we can be contacted and we'll be more than happy to get in touch we uh thank you mr rajiv for summarizing it really well uh and like mr rajiv uh, mentioned uh we can be reached out at info at olitech or you could visit our website or you could simply just move over to the exhibit hall and uh chat with us at the virtual booth as well uh thank you so much thank you so much really everybody it has been a pleasure uh, to be talking in front of all of you uh thank you from philip and from uh, mr rajiv thank you so much uh, thank you rajiv thank you shalinder uh, thank you philip for that wonderful Thanks. session and uh, as uh, shalinder mentioned i would like to highlight again for more queries you can reach out to the exhibit area and you can interact with the uh, representatives from olitech stall uh, download their brochures view their brochures view their corporate videos learn more about their offerings and of course the whole team of olitech is still there till the end of this event today so you can interact and chat with them also at the networking lounge and learn more about your unique requirements and i'm sure they'll be more